Annie, we are updating a very nice luxury apartment complex. We have a lot of outlets that are worn out, and we're going to be putting in some nice brand new ones. Here in the country I was born in, we use 14 American wire gauge on 15 amps, 12 American wire gauge on 20 amps. Black is live, white is neutral, the bare of the green is the brown. Red and blue are also live colors, however, you may find white live in a switch loop or a 220, 240 volt circuit where the appliance does not require a neutral. So first we will uh, shut off all the circuits so we don't have any power in them and I can work on them much faster and safer. And it's nice to see the uh, wiring devices we are using are made here in the country I was born in. There's a very good guy on uh, YouTube and he is doing, or on, not on YouTube, on Facebook, who is doing a free school. His name is Samuel Ware. So I'm going to uh, dedicate this video for him to use in his uh, free class he is doing. I think he's doing a wonderful thing to help people. So I'd like to contribute to him and help. So I'll show you how to go along and replace some worn out switches and outlets. So we have all these uh, circuit breakers off. This is a Wadsworth panel. Nice to see the devices are made here in the country I was born in. So let's take our hot cover off our outlet here. I'm just going to from the wall here. We just simply have one black wire that's on the brass screw here. We take it off. That's our live wire. Switch it over here. White is on the silver colored screw. This one was designed to stick the wire under the terminal. See how it goes in a hole here and there's like a little groove in there. The ground wire goes on the green screw. And if you look closely, you'll see the silver colored screw goes to the wide slot. The black wire goes to the brass screw, which is the narrower slot. And the bare ground wire goes to the screen screw, which is the ground. So we'll put our brand new outlet in here. We're going to see if it's going to fit in here without... Yeah, it will. So we're going to uh, straighten these wires out. take off about an inch. I strip with the hole that matches the wire size because otherwise you can make a hole, an indentation in the wire all the way around and then you'll have a weak spot in the wire. Okay, we take off about an inch like that. We'll use our uh, Robertson screwdriver here. We'll close the uh, two screws that we're not going to be using so they're not going to be in the way of anything. Okay, so we can start with putting our black wire on the brass screw. You make your loop the direction the screw turns. Put it around the screw the way that the screw turns. I'm going to make our loop a little bit bigger here. Like that. And we'll just close it the direction our screw turns like that. Make sure we get our copper under the screw head all the way. I'm just pulling forward a little bit on it so the wire is under the screw head all the way around. Tighten it up so it looks like that. And then we'll turn it around this way. 
and we'll make our loop the direction our screw turns. Put our use our needle nose pliers, close our loop the direction our screw turns like that, and we'll just simply tighten it up. Make sure it's nice and tight. Our insulation is not under the screw head, but not behind the plastic there. That's what we want. Now we can put our bare ground wire around the green screw. Now it has that little guide up here that can help you close the loop. But if it's a heavier wire, you can use your needle nose. You just close your, tighten it up like that. Now we're ready to screw this outlet into the box. We're going to turn it around like this. We're going to take our ground wire. We're going to push it down. We're going to fold it across the bottom here. We're going to keep it down at the bottom. And we'll go down. And we'll go up with our black and our white like this. And we'll push it back into the box, keeping this ground wire down at the bottom like that. Okay, our plaster ears are big enough to fit the tiles here, so we'll fit on here nice and snug. Okay, now we're going to replace a single pole light switch. This is an older one. We'll take our cover off here. They used a three way switch for a single pole switch. wallpaper around this here. switch is wired after the light and they didn't do too bad of a job hooking this up. We'll save this switch. We're just putting in nice new matching switches. a little bit bigger because we're going to put a new switch in here with a bigger screw head on it. And it looks like they stripped this with a jackknife. So you just take your, this is 14 gauge wire, so we'll strip with our 14 gauge hole. And uh, there's no ground wire in here. So on a single pole switch, it does not matter which 
wire you put on which screw because it's just a single pole switch. So we'll make our loop the direction our screw turns here. Put it around our screw the direction our screw turns like that. Get a nice connection like that. Now I'm going to straighten that wire out from the old loop so I make a better nice new loop. You always put your wire around the screw the direction your screw turns. Because when you tighten the screw, it closes the loop rather than opens the loop. Tighten it up and we have a nice connection like that. And there's no ground wire, and if there was a ground wire, you'd put it on the green screw here. So we just fold these wires back into our box like this. Okay, here in the country I was born in, down is off, up is on. If you put the switch in upside down, when it, you'll say no here instead of on when it's upside down. So that way you'll know it's upside down. But I put it in right side up, off, on. They are going to be painting all the walls and uh, baseboard, so I'm going to show you a trick here when I put this new outlet in. Okay, so we have a black, a white, and a ground, but there's no ground coming through here. We didn't, they didn't put a green wire through here. So we're going to look and see if there's a place we can uh, put a green screw in the back of the box here. And if there isn't, there isn't. And it looks like there isn't. So there's nothing we can do about that. So uh, the yoke of the outlet is bonded to this green screw. So when I screw it to the box, we'll be using the conduit or the wire mold as a ground. So we'll close this here. We'll close the screw we're not going to use. Because that way it's out of our way. And we'll strip our wires. I'm going to strip, make them nice and long so that they're long enough to go around the screw head all the way. You always make your loop the direction your screw is going to turn. Because if you put it around the screw backwards, okay, so we're going to close our loop the direction our screw turns like that. Nice and tight like that. 
Now this was put in before when they allowed the wire mold or the conduit to be used for a ground. Okay, make a nice loop like that. Make sure it's nice and tight and looks like that. And now we can put our device back into our box like this. Okay, let's look and make sure the screws aren't going to hit any of the wires and they're not. And we'll just use the screws that we have here. Okay, now since you're going to be painting this wall, this is called painter's tape, and they're going to be painting the baseboards here, so we're going to find the end of our tape here, and we'll just take, and we'll cover the face of this outlet so it does not get all covered up with paint. It comes in different widths, so we have a narrower width, so we're going to put two layers on. Like that. And we'll just make sure it's covered up. And then we'll leave our cover up here so when they're done painting, they will put the uh, cover back on our outlet. And this outlet is an older outlet. It's probably maybe uh, 10, 15 years old. It's worn out. It doesn't hold the plugs very well. And it's also made here in the country I was born in. UL listed. Okay, let's see what we have on this one here. Okay, now this one we have a, a ground wire, two black wires. So we're going to unhook our blacks like this. We'll come over here. We'll get our ground wire off the green screw here. And they properly did it with a crimp sleeve, as you can see there. We have our white wires here. So get all the junk out of here. Okay, now we're going to have to strip our wires longer. I want to have about an inch exposed to go around my screws. Now you can either pigtail the wires together and go with one 
wire of each to the outlet, or you can do them in series. Or you put both wires on each side of the outlet. So I'm going to show you the uh, series design on this one here. Okay, so we have our, we'll do our white and our grounds first. So we'll take our ground wire here, we'll open it up, we'll make our loop just a little bigger because we have a bigger screw head here. Close our loop the direction of our screw turns. And we'll put our two white wires. Now I'm gonna come around and turn this one so we can make two white over here. Make my loop the direction of our screw turns. Close it the direction of our screw turns like that. Make sure it's nice and tight. Our copper's under the screw head all the way. Make sure we close our loop, get our copper under the screw head all the way. This is a Robertson one screwdriver. With the Phillips screwdriver, I'll just hop like a bunny rabbit when you torque it. There we got it. Our make sure our insulation is not under the screw head and our copper is under all the way around. Like that. Now we'll just flip it around like this. Okay, so we'll keep our ground wire over on this side. And we'll hook our black wires on the brass screws. Like that. Make sure it's nice and tight. And I'll just make sure our insulation is not under our screw head. We have a nice connection there. Now we're going to keep our ground wire down here away from everything. So I see it staying away from everything here. I'm going to make sure I push it back. And keep it up towards the top here. So it stays away from everything. And again, we're going to be painting this wall, baseboard here. Nice and snug, and we'll get our painter's tape. Okay, so we'll cover this with some painter's tape so that they don't get paint in the outlet itself here. We'll just go over it like that. It's made by Scotch. You can see the brand in there.
you know, just tear a little bit off here and we can fold it over so that what needs to be painted gets painted, but we don't get the outlet covered in the paint. There we go. Keep this part over here untaped. Let's just so that what's behind the cover does not get painted. See how the paint is ending right there? So I want to make sure I bring my tape up to about that. Oh, same over here so that when they paint, they don't get any paint on this outlet itself. And what needs to be painted will be painted all around the outlet. So we'll go to our next one. Okay, so let's see what we got on this one here. I'm going to take my hat off so the visor doesn't get in the way. Okay, this is just a one wire one. So we'll just unscrew. Unhook our ground wire here. Now these newer outlets do have a a backstab on them, so I'll show you how to use it. I don't like using it, but I'll do this one that way so you can see how it's done. So we'll close all our screws. These are the screws you're not going to be using. Now, if you look on the back here, you'll see a strip gauge. So we'll hold our, we'll get our wire straightened out here, hold it up against our strip gauge, and that is the perfect length. And that is the perfect length right there. So first we'll take, we'll get some dirt out of here. We'll put our bare ground wire around our green screw. They don't have a, a lock for the green screw, so we'll put it under there. Okay, we're gonna make our loop just a little bigger. Close our loop to direction our screw turns. Tighten it up. Okay, again, you put your white in the hole behind the silver screw, so you'll see a, a release slot and a hole for the wire. Put the wire in the... Okay, I'm going to make sure these wires are nice and straight before I put them in. Make sure they're nice and straight. So we'll start with our black wire. We'll put it in there. Okay. I feel the barb and I push it down all the way. And I make sure the insulation is butted up to the bottom there. And I put the white on the silver side. I feel the little barb, push it down and see how the insulation is butted up all the way to the plastic. That's the way it should be. So we're going to keep our ground wire over this way. And we push this in. We'll keep it over this way so it doesn't touch something we don't want it to touch. I don't like using the backstab, but I did one this way just to show you how it's done. And 
screwing in. There's a little opening where the screw goes here that, so you can slide it up and down to make it go straight in case the box is lopsided. You can see the little gap there so, that's so you can slide it either way. So again, we'll cover this with some uh, painter's tape so that they don't get paint into the uh, receptacle itself because the paint can get into the outlet and make it not have good connection and you'll have heat build up because of the poor connection. So we're going to put our tape on here. So hopefully our next outlet has four wires in it so we can show you how to do the uh, pigtail method in parallel. Now this one's all loose because they didn't tighten the screw to hold it in the box. So that is some pretty sloppy work from the people before. Okay, we can do a, I'll show you a parallel connection here. We have uh, four wires. So we'll get all our wires unhooked here. Flip it back this way. As you can see, they did a poor job getting the ground wire around the green screw. See how it's sticking out like that? Okay, so we'll pull our wires out here. Get all our debris out and junk out of here. So here in the country I was born in, we use uh, wire nuts to make our connections. Red and yellow are the most common. Orange is a little bit smaller for hooking up like a light fixture. The 14 wire going to the uh, 18 gauge wire on the light fixture. So we'll get our tail wires out of a piece of Romex here, matching the size that we are using. And our ground is together with a crimp sleeve the way it should be. So we can uh, strip our wires here. I'd like to take off a little bit like about an inch here. And we'll take off about an inch on the, this one. Always match the size wire you're using. I have to get my pliers. Okay, so we'll take our first two wires, we'll get our insulation, we'll straighten them out, we'll get our insulation even at the top here like this. See how I get the insulation even at the top? I'll start twisting our first two wires. I'll take my third wire, get my insulation even at the top here like this, and just twist it in. See how it goes in nice and lines up, everything's all nice and even here. 
Now what I'll do is I'll clip it so I have about three quarters of an inch to an inch. And we'll put our wire nut on here. You always twist your wires clockwise. Now I'm holding my tail so that the wires all stay even inside the wire nut. I like the ones with these wings. Got it nice and tight. Now make sure my insulation is going up into this bottom portion here. So there's our white wires done. Now we'll do our black wires. I take off about an inch. Okay, so I'll get my insulation lined up at the bottom like this here. The first two started. Keeping the insulation even at the bottom. Bring my third wire in. Insulation even at the bottom. I'll bring it around. Make sure it's going in there even. See how it's going in there nice and evenly? I twist them so they go in nice and tight. Now I'll clip them here on the end so you can see I'm getting them all even on the end of the inside of the wire nut. Okay, so I see my insulation's even at the top here and uh, the copper is even here at the bottom. Put my wire nut on. I see the insulation's going into the bottom of the wire nut. And uh, my fingers are kind of sore, so I can use my pliers to tighten this wire knot here. There we go. That's what we want. And now we can fold our wires back into our box the way we want them. Get them back out of the way. It's a nice deep box. Okay, get them in all the way here. Now we'll hook our outlet up, fold our wires to go into the box. And now we're ready to hook our outlet up. So we'll take off about an inch with our 14 gauge hole. You always strip with the, uh, you can see the wire gauges here on the strippers, so you match it with the gauge you're using. Okay, now we'll just close our screws that we're not going to be using here. Hey, how are you doing? Um, Good evening. Yep, making a video. How are you? Yep. Okay, so uh, we put our wire around the screw the direction our screw turns. Close our loop the direction the screw turns. There's our black on the brass. We'll flip it around this way. We'll get our white wire on the silver screw. Put our white on the silver screw like that. Make sure it's nice and tight like that. Now we'll put our, we'll fold our wires to go into our box like this. Now we'll put our ground wire up here on our green screw. Alrighty. Gotta make it so it goes around our screw all the way. Don't 
bring it up here. Now I can close it with my pliers, close our loop the direction our screw turns. And now we'll just put our wires, we'll keep our ground wire up this way so it stays away from everything. And we'll fold our wires so that they go into the box like an accordion and keep our ground wire up this way, zigzag this way so it stays away from any live terminals or current carrying terminals, the neutral. And now we can just simply screw it into our box. I'm doing this one left-handed, so it's a little trickier because the light is on the other side, so you can get a better view in my picture. Because I'm making this video for uh, Samuel Ware, and he's doing a wonderful thing, so I'd like to contribute and uh, give him a nice video to uh, help his for his free school. Now we're going to get our painter's tape and I'll cover this because they're going to be painting here. Okay, so we'll put our painter's tape over the outlet. Covered good so that the painters don't get paint inside the outlets. Now, this one's on the wallpaper, so they're not going to be taking this one out so we're and painting over this one so we'll just cut our existing wallpaper off here that way you don't damage the wallpaper when you take the outlet out because they're keeping this wallpaper and I like this uh, wallpaper it's really nice it's probably 20 years old maybe 10 20 years old and this outlet is worn out, so we're going to put a nice new one in here. Now, I'm not going to do a lot of explaining on this one, so you can see how quick and easy it can be done.
which is nice and tight. That's the most copper you want to have behind your terminal. That's where you want the insulation perfectly. And we move over this way and we'll get our white wires on the solar screws. There's our connections the way we want them. Our green wire around the green screw. It's a lighter gauge wire, so I'll take my screwdriver and push it over that way. So it's under the screw head all the way around. This wall is not going to be painted, so we're not going to painter's tape it. And we can just stick our cover back. Paint's all covered with the screw. There we go.
Oh, no, we do have the ground on this one, so we can just uh, unscrew our wires. Remember how I said sometimes the ground wire is green? Here's an example of where it's green. So it's not always a bare wire. So I make my strip length about an inch. Close up the screws I'm not going to be using. Okay, so close our, make our loop that are actually our screw tabs. I'll put our white on the silver colored screw here. Make sure our cop is under the screw head all the way around. Come over here. Okay, our wire hole is going through the bottom here, so we don't have to worry about the screws hitting the wires. So, make sure it's tight. And that's how we want the wires around the screws. So now we just put our wires back into our box. So it goes in like an accordion, and then just make, oh, that make sure that's tight. And now we'll just push this in. Make sure our screws aren't going to hit the wires. Now this is up on the wallpaper, so this is not going to be painted. And uh, this is a nice older uh, style cover, so it's uh, made by the uh, Hubble Company.
Okay, so it's just one layer in here. They didn't even put the ground wire around the screw properly. It's sticking up over here. It should be closed closer to the end of the loop. See how the loop is? They didn't make a full loop. See how they stripped it with a jackknife here? That's how you get some insulation under the screw head and that's not good. You want to use your strippers so that the insulation is cleaned off all the way around. How's it going? It's doing good. Making a video for a uh, another electrician to use for his uh, free school. He teaches people, so I'm make, making a video for him to share with his students. All right. Did you get a hold of John? Yeah. Good. Now this one, we're going to put the painter's tape on because we're going to paint the base more. set here because when they're done painting they'll put it back on. Thank you. 
This one's another one we have double wires in. See how that one doesn't, the wire didn't get under the screw head very good. I don't like this design. See how that copper is not all the way under the screw head, but this one is under the screw head. So these are very poor design, I think. Yep, how you doing? Good. Great. Great. Making, Great. I'm making a video for a uh, another electrician who's doing a free school online for people. Oh, yeah? Yep. Make sure the copper is under the screw head all the way around. And that's what we want right there. Now we'll bring our ground wire. We're going to bring it over this way. So we get our ground wire up here on our green screw.
is tight. Okay, we're going to keep our ground wire back this way. It's short, so we're going to bring it up and keep it on the back and over on this side so it doesn't touch anything we don't want it to touch. Ground wire, I want to make sure it's not going to get in the way of anything. So I'm going to loosen this up here. Let's see where it's going. Okay, I'm going to push it back this way. I'm going to grab my crimp sleeve here and push it back this way. So, there we go. Now they're going to be painting this mop board here, so we'll put our uh, painter's tape on this outlet here. And we'll leave our cover here, because when they're done painting, they'll put the cover on. We're at the second to the last outlet now. Our wire mold box is kind of loose, so we'll tighten these screws that hold the wire mold box on the wall. And we'll just make sure we're in the track here and here, here and here. Mm, okay, this one's backstabbed. You may have a very poor connection with that ground wire on the green screw. See how it's not around all the way properly? Pull these wires out of the holes here. I'll have to just clip them. Okay, so we got our very short wires here, and we have our longer wires here. Strip these with our 14 gauge hole. Now these are so short, I'm not going to be able to get them on the screws. So what I'm going to do is backstab these, which I don't really want to do, but it's kind of short and I don't have a choice. So I'm going to close these two screws here. Strip these a little longer so we can get them around the screws.
close our loop, the collection of screw turns there. Make sure it's tight. Now these wires are so short, these go up for our smoke detector, so I'm going to strip these so we can backstab them. Strip with our 14 hole. You want to make sure your wire is nice and straight before you backstab them. Make sure it's straight, so when I put them in the hole, it makes a good connection. So I'm going to do my white here first. Now I'm going to do the backstabbing after I do both screw terminals, so there's not much moving around of the outlet. I don't want to weaken that connection once I push them in. Make sure it's tight. Come over here. I'll put the black on the brass colored screw. Make sure it's tight, like that. So now we'll bring it back this way. Now we'll, we'll do our back stab here. I make sure I go in the right hole there. I feel the barb. Push it in all the way. And since it's short, I'll just use my pliers. Push it down. Get my white wire into the right hole here. Make sure it goes straight in. really short, but there's nothing I can do about it. I just want it to go in straight without kinking or bending so I get a good connection. There. See how I get the uh, insulation all the way up butted to the uh, plastic on the outlet? And we'll push our ground wires back and we'll screw this into our box. Now, this wire mold is going into the middle, so I'm going to shorten the screw up so we don't risk damaging our wire. Shorten this one a little bit so I don't hit the wires. I wish I had my Robertson, but I don't. So I'll just use the Phillips. There it goes. There it goes. If it doesn't go, you just force it. It will go. Well, guess what? It's not going, so throw it away. I don't want it. I don't want it. So I'll just have to use the long one. And if 
It hops like a bunny rabbit. It hops like a bunny. I love bunny rabbits. Okay, it's not going to hit the wires. It goes in a little hard. You just force it. It will go. Kiss it goodbye. The one I threw away, I kissed it goodbye. I'm glad it's gone because I won't be frustrating with it. And the sweepers can just sweep it up and throw it away. I never had a screw go this hard, but I'm glad I got it. Tight. Tight. Now just make sure that's not hitting a wire. And then it is not hitting any of the wires. And now we're off to our last outlet. And we'll put our painter's tape on this. Because they're going to paint the baseboard here. So let's cover this up so it doesn't get painted up. This is our last one here. This is a kitchen outlet. This is on a 12 gauge wire on a 20 amp circuit. The others were on a 14 gauge wire on a 15 amp circuit, but you make the connections all the same way. And this just has one wire on each side. So we'll close the screws you're not going to be using here. There's a green wire on the ground screw. You always make your loops the direction that your screw turns.
tight and our ground wire broke off, so we have to do it again. Screw like that here. We have it going the direction our screw turns. We'll make sure the loop is closed all the way there. It's such a fine wire, I don't want it to break again. Okay, so that's what we want right there. So now we can push this back into our box. Keep our ground wired out the bottom here. Make sure it's nice and tight. And there wasn't a cover on this, I don't think. Or here it is. So they're not repainting this wall or the cover back on this one. So now we'll turn all our circuits back on and we'll close our box up. All right, so uh, thanks for watching. I'm uh, dedicating this video to uh, Samuel Ware. He's a wonderful guy. I really appreciate what he's doing, doing a free class online to help people learn how to do electrical wiring, and I hope he enjoys this video, and I hope his uh, students enjoy it. So that is how we uh, wire and hook up outlets here in the country I was born in. Peace. Thanks for watching.